from Canada. Kingston, Ontario, Canada. My mother left me when I was 11 years old. She put me in a, a foster home where the man sexually abused me for six months to a year. You know, children today need love from their parents, not sexual perversions, not sexual abuse, not abuse, not mental abuse. Our young people are crying out for someone to discipline them and the parents say, come home whenever you want to come home. They don't take any time to spend with their children. They're too busy making a living instead of making a life. You know, the Bible says someday we all have to stand before Jesus. Every knee shall bow and confess that he is Lord, every knee. You know, you may think I'm a little too loud for you. You can't seem to handle it. There's a little mental process going on in your head right now. And you think this guy, this preacher, this evangelist, Jonathan Bell, is an extremist. Well, I'm not. I'm not an extremist. I'll tell you something. I pray all the time. I read the Word of God five to eight hours a day. I feel God's power. I feel God's heart for people. You know, it's very easy to preach the Word on Sunday and live like the devil through the week. There's all kinds of sexual perversions going on in the world today. And hardly anybody stands up for what's right. They don't tell you in church what is sin. They don't tell you you're going to hell. Oh, just give money to the church. We won't tell you what your filthy, rotten sin is. Do you know if you've got sin in your life today and you haven't realized that you're a filthy, rotten sinner, that you're going to hell? You're going to hell. And hell isn't just a place of fire and brimstone. It's a place where you're going to be tormented in your mind. Do you know I had a vision two years ago when Jesus Christ personally showed himself to me? And I was seeking God. Do you know if you seek God a lot, you receive a lot from him? You receive a lot from God. If you seek, you find. If you don't ask God into your life, you think you can go to the altar and you get everything from God. You're dead wrong. Jesus said we must be a doer of the word, not a hearer only. He also said if you continue in sin, if you continue to sin, when you know what the word of God says about your sin, there's no more sacrifice. There's no more sacrifice. I could name all kinds of churches today that stand up in front of their people in these fancy buildings when they could be helping the poor people with the money they waste it to have a fancy building. I mean, God is not interested in us having fancy buildings. He's interested in us helping the fatherless, the widows, the poor people. I mean, we got to get back to the basics today. You know, people go to church, they don't even feel the presence of God. They go home the same. There's no Pentecostal experience like in the book of Acts chapter 2. Let me read it to you. What, I, what the book of Acts says, when the day of Pentecost... This is after Jesus came to the apostles. His body hadn't yet been glorified. He said he'd send the comforter, and he said to his apostles and followers, go wait in the upper room until you be endued with power. Go wait for me and have patience. People want it right now. They don't have patience. You better get some patience, bucko. You're going to learn patience. Our life circumstances are going to bring things your way that will make you and break you. So you're fit for heaven. Don't you think proud and arrogant people are making it to heaven? They're not. Pride is not from God. Jesus Christ was a humble servant. He was not a proud, arrogant man. You see the rich all over the place today driving their fancy cars, living in their fancy houses, and they won't even bother to help ministries. You know, they, Jesus said they'll be lovers of themselves in the last days. Sexual perversions in the last days. You know, AIDS will kill. 25% of the world within five years will be dead because of AIDS. I mean, wake up! Women are killing the fetus within them, and they don't even have a conscience that tells them they're murdering. 
I mean, look around you in the newspapers today. Don't read that garbage in the National Enquirer. You know, Jesus said, don't put no evil thing before your eyes. There's all kinds of Christians that read dirty magazines. You know, if you put that filth in your mind, there's no way you're going to make it in. No way. Don't think just because you, you go to the front of the altar and say, Oh, Jesus Christ, come in, and then go live like the devil, you're going to heaven. You're not, buddy. Not for one minute. Don't be deceived. The Word of God is not mocked. If you think for a minute that God is going to let you in, remember what the ten virgins, the story of the ten virgins? Five were wise, five were foolish. Five said to the other, well, give us some of your oil. You know, oil represents the presence of God and the Word of God in the Bible. Oil. They didn't have very much Word in their heart. They didn't have this experience of the Holy Spirit in their heart. They were empty of oil. And the bridegroom came and took the five, and the other five were busy at the store where they should have been full of the oil, and they weren't. They came back and they were left. They went up and knocked on the doors of heaven, and Jesus opened the door and said, I don't know you. You know, there's a lot of you people today that think you're making it in, and you're not. You're deceived. If you don't obey this word of God, heaven is a holy place. It's a holy place, and only holy people are going to make it in. The Bible says the way is straight and narrow, and few there be that find it. Few there be that find it. Oh, let's take the broad way today. You know, we, the Bible teaches against murder, but we'll go to filthy, rotten movies, and we'll watch someone else murder. You know, I was invited to a singles get-together through the Church of Christ on Friday night, and they were going to show people that weren't even saved Terminator 2! Terminator 2! And a singles meeting in a church! I mean, come on! Where's the holy people of God today? Where's the people helping the poor today? All people do is make fun of you when you try to do something for Jesus Christ. Two years ago, God gave me a vision where I saw young people, men and women, no children there. No clothes on. They had their hands up in the air and they were screaming and yelling in hell. This was at a spiritual peak in my life. And because I have faith as a child, Jesus Christ shows me visions all the time. He talks with me all the time. Whether you believe it or not, he does. Whether you think i got a big mouth or not, he talks to me. Because he knows I'm not afraid to preach it. I was abused as a child. Most of my life I suffered. Until I was 27, I suffered with depression. I wanted to kill myself for three years of my life because of the sexual abuse that I had when I was a child. And it took me years to overcome that garbage. And I'm talking to homosexuals today. If you've turned your life over to Jesus Christ, you need to put on the full armor of God that you may withstand the walls of the enemy and you put on the full armor of God by preaching the word to the devil. When Satan came to Jesus, he didn't just say, oh, hello, bucko. He said, it is written, Satan, thou shalt not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Every word. Now, if Jesus would say that to Satan, what is he saying to you today? If you're depressed, if all you care about is getting your paycheck, spending it any way you want, and you couldn't care less about your brother and sister, you couldn't care less about the beggar on the street. And you know, there's lots of people that don't deserve any help. They're just lazy bums. But there's people on the street that want to change their lives, and hardly anyone wants to help them. And yet Jonathan Bell Ministries is trying to do something, and there's few people that want to help me do the job. I mean, I gave up my business in Canada two years ago, $100,000 a year salary, 
to come into the ministry where I'm not even making 15 grand a year. I'm not in this for a mansion. I don't want your money to buy me a mansion like some so-called preachers here in Dallas. I couldn't care less. I live in a one-bedroom apartment, and I don't even have a car right now. Someone stole my car two weeks ago, and I can't get it back. And I'm not giving you a pity party story. I'm just saying when you try to do something for Jesus Christ, the devil's going to come against you. Do you know that the devil uses Christians against other Christians? Huh. I mean, I've been looking for a church to go to here in Dallas. And I've been to quite a few. And every time I go, all they try to do is tell me what to do. And I say, look it, if you want to tell me what to do, it better line up with this book right here, the King James, the Bible. It better line up with that. And if it doesn't, don't try to tell me how to interpret the scripture. Because the Bible says the Holy Spirit will teach you and lead you into all truth. It will lead you into all truth. Do you know people go to church and they never read their Bible? I mean, come on! If you call yourself a Christian today, and you don't take time to read this book, and you don't become a holy person, how in God's name do you think you're going to make it in? When Jesus himself said there's five stupid virgins, and there's five wise. Are you a stupid, foolish virgin today? Or are you one of the wise ones? Now you may not like the way I preach it. I couldn't care less whether you like it or not. I'm giving you what God's told me to give you. If you don't want it, then turn the channel! But when Judgment Day comes, don't you dare point the finger at me. Don't you point that finger when you're on the other side of the gate. And God's judging you for your sin. You know, we have to confess our sins daily. We have to come before him daily and ask him to forgive us. But that doesn't mean we're supposed to live in sin every day. Paul said to strive for perfection, for the high calling of Jesus Christ. And the only way you can get closer to God is getting his word in your heart, your soul, and your mind. You can't get closer to God watching soap operas all day. That stuff is not from God. And if you watch that filth, you're an abomination to God. Don't you think for a moment when you stand before Christ someday, and believe me, buddy, it's going to come real soon. And it's right around the corner. They're building the temple right now in Israel. And Jesus said, look up for your redemption, draft nigh, when they build the temple in Jerusalem, where he's going to descend from heaven, and he's going to be anointed, and the Ark of the Covenant's going to be there, and he's coming back for me, and he's coming back for those that are full of him. Now, if you don't get excited about what I have to say today, you better get the mind of Christ. If you have the mind of Christ, then you can understand exactly where I'm coming from. Now, if the devil's talking to you and telling you that this guy's full of it, then you, you make a choice today to serve Jesus or serve him. Christ said, choose this day whom you will serve. Choose this day whom you will serve. And I'm telling you today, you're not promised of tomorrow. You could get killed in a car accident tomorrow morning, tonight, this afternoon, and where would your soul go? This life is like a vapor. You must be washed in the blood of Christ. You must repent of your sin. You must receive the baptism. You must be emerged in water just like Acts 2.38 says repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And if you're going to another church that don't preach that, buddy, you better get out of there. You better get out of that church and get in one that's full of the Holy Spirit. You should be going to a church where the pastor gets up and he's not afraid to preach it and he doesn't have to follow notes and pages of paper 
He's anointed and he preaches the full gospel and the power of God's all over him and you can see it. You can feel the power from someone who's anointed. But if your eyes have not been opened yet, you don't even know what I'm talking about. If you're a new believer, you need to study the book of John. And if you need more understanding, get an NIV version. Otherwise, get the new King James version. Study it. Get up and study it. Go to bed and study it. Satan does not want you to study the word of God because he knows he has no power over you if you have the word. But he can put all kinds of trash into your mind. Do you know, the other morning I had a demon come in my apartment, black demon, grab me and throw me on the floor and put his fist in my mouth and tell me to shut my mouth. And he hated my guts and he was going to take my life. I couldn't even talk to the demon. I couldn't even open my mouth. And he held me on the floor and he said, Jonathan Bell, I'm going to kill you and you're not going to preach the word. Well, I got the news for you, devil. I'll preach this word of God until the day I die. And if no one wants to support my ministry, I'll find people who will support it. And I'll preach the word of God. And I'll send people books like Dress to Kill. Do you know this book? I'm offering this book to you today. If you write me at my P.O. box, I'll send you this book. This is a book on spiritual warfare. Every Christian that's doing anything for Jesus needs to read this book. What are you putting in your mind? You know, people spend more time reading the filthy newspaper than they do the Word of God. I mean, get your priorities straight. If you're not spending time with your children, buddy, you better spend time with them because they're growing up very quickly. And don't tell your wife to work if she doesn't want to. Your children are only going to be young for one time. They need you right now. When they come home from school, they need you there. My mother was never there for me. I grew up never loving myself. I never loved myself until I went through hell. I never loved myself until I was 27 because I always looked to everyone else to satisfy me. I looked to people to satisfy me. Give me love, give me love, make me feel good. Because I never cared about myself. Do you know today, if you don't love yourself, there's no way in God's name God can use you in a big way. One of the commandments was love yourself as you love your neighbor. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Proverbs says a man is what he thinketh. You are what you thinketh today. If you're depressed, get a good book on how to love yourself. Write me for a book today. This book right here will set you free from depression. Now, as you can see, I believe in reading. But how in heaven's name can you put good stuff in your head if you don't read? If you don't know how to read, then write me for my tapes, and I have the whole book on tape. And I'll send you the tape. And don't forget, these books cost me money, but because I'm on the cable network today, I'm not on channel 39 today, I'm on the cable network. I'm not on channel 11 today, I'm on the cable network. And I'm trying to reach people for Christ through the cable network. Now there's some of you that need this book right here. It's called Damage, Healing for Damaged Emotions. It's recovering from memories that cause us pain. Do you know if you get flashbacks of depression that you need to quote this scripture to the filthy spirits that are coming and putting that filth in your mind? God is not the author of confusion, but of a sound mind. Write that down right now. Write it down. God is not the author of confusion, but of a sound mind. I had a demon come from behind six months ago, and I've had them bugging me ever since. I mean, I've had them bugging me for two years, even before that. But they never visualized themselves before me, except once before I went to Bible school. When I was getting ready to go to Central Bible College in Springfield, Missouri, to the Assembly of God Church, I had a demon come to me and say, Jonathan Bell, you're never going to preach. I'm going to kill you. Or you're going to commit suicide, one or the other. 
And I'm still here, devil. I'm still preaching the word of God. And there's not a thing you can do about it. Do you know the Bible says that he can attack us? And God allows him to attack us because he wants us to realize that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I don't care what the devil has to say about Jonathan Bell Ministries. I'm not taking money from people and using it the wrong way. I'm not sexually abusing people. I don't want to hurt anybody. All I want to do is help people. I mean, we're trying to set up offices here in Dallas to help people. And you know, since I've been here, I've been on the channel networks here in Dallas and Channel 39. And I had to use every last cent I had to pay for that myself. And I've been preaching the Word of God for two months. And you know there's not one person that has written me to support my ministry? Not one! I mean, I don't know what's going on. I mean, I know I've been called into this ministry, but I can't understand why people don't care to help! I can't afford to go on the TV networks now! Now, Dallas Cable Access, they don't charge me any money to bring this program to you! And thank God for Dallas Cable Access. Thank God. There would be no voice for me unless there was this cable network. Now, I know people are suffering today. People are losing their jobs. But that doesn't mean you should keep your money in the bank and not help anyone. I mean, come on. I live in a one-bedroom apartment. I don't want your money for a mansion. But we have to do something about the pathetic situation that's here in Dallas and right across the U.S. Our ministry, Jonathan Bell Ministry, wants to set up ranches outside New York, Chicago, outside Dallas, where we can bring children, help the Children Aid Society. They don't have enough people to help the children that are being sexually abused right now. They don't have any money to set up ranches. That's what I'm trying to do. I want to set up ranches. This is what I feel called to do. I didn't leave my business in Canada to come over here and be defeated by the devil. Now I just pray to God that you realize that I'm not your enemy. I'm not your enemy. I'm here to help people. You know, someone said, oh, you got to be on for a year before anyone will help you. That's a filthy lie. I mean, I've been a member of Assemblies of God Church. I went to Deseronal Pentecostal Church. I mean, I grew up, I was vice president of a singles group there in the KGT, Kingston Gospel Temple in Kingston, Ontario. Now, this is going back a couple years. I've been working on my own ministry with people helping me help prostitutes, drug addicts, children who are abused, schizophreniacs. Now, we have to, we have to help each other. I mean, what do you think God's going to say to you when you stand before him someday when you die and you got a million bucks in the bank? What do you think he's going to say to you? Or maybe you got 500 in the bank. You know money, the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it. The love of it. That means there's sin in your life. And if there's sin in your life when Jesus comes, he said he's coming back for a church without spot or wrinkle. Without spot or wrinkle. Now this book, if you write me, I'll send you this book. And don't forget, it costs me money, and I'm using my own money. Nobody's given me money to assist me in this ministry yet. Nobody has helped me yet. You know, everybody wants something for nothing. I mean, you're getting fed from this program, and you couldn't care less about helping me. Anyway, I'll send you this book if you write me. My address is Jonathan Bell Ministries, P.O. Box 191089-577, Dallas, Texas, 75219. I want to send you this book if you're suffering with depression, low self-esteem. <clears throat> if you got problems from sexual abuse in your past, you need this book. You have to put good stuff in your mind to get healed. If you've been abused for years, there's no way you're going to overcome it by going to the psychologist. You can give him a hundred bucks an hour and he can't heal you. God's word can heal you though. Knowing Jesus Christ can heal you. Jesus said my people perish for lack of knowledge. My people perish 
for lack of knowledge. There's a lot of people going to church today and they think they're going to heaven just because they go to church. You're not. The Bible says we must be doers of the word, not hearers only. You know, the highest calling Jesus has, you can read this in the, in the book, is to help the fatherless and the widow. In how many churches today are people, so-called Christian people, are helping their brother across the street, are helping their neighbor? You know you're going to be held accountable for the blood of people within your arms. Jeremiah said, to whom much is given, much is expected. But Jeremiah said, their blood will be on your hands. Now, if God's revealed himself to me the way I, I know he has, and I hope you can see that, but if he's revealed himself to me in the way that he has, there's a burden on me. On my way to Kenneth Copeland's conference in California, I came across, we were staying in a motel. I look after an elderly lady and her handicapped son. I've been looking after them for two years. They couldn't handle the pressure of the devil here in Dallas coming against my life. So they went back to Canada. They left me here. But you know, when we're doing something for Jesus, we have to stand without our family. My whole family disowned me to come over here. Thought I was a stupid fool to leave my business. And I was, I was president and founder of Christian Single of Canada, which is an organization that helps single people in the church to try to develop wholesome relationships. And I started that organization a year ago, and God was blessing it great. And you know, when I tried to read the word to the single, most of them would condemn me for reading the word. They didn't want to hear the word. They wanted to have a party. Very few people want to hear the full word of God. Very few people. Do you know, there's not as many people going to heaven that think they are. Unless you've had the experience, like the book of Acts says, chapter 2, it says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is what Jesus said he said when he went up to heaven with his body to be glorified. He appeared before Doubt and Thomas. Do you remember that? Are you a Doubt and Thomas today? You know, you may not accept everything that I have to say today, but it doesn't matter to me whether you believe everything I have to say or not. I know everything I'm talking about straight out of the Word, and I can give scriptures for everything. But whether you accept my word or not, if you condemn me, you condemn God. Jesus said they will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, lovers of flesh. You know, I live in an apartment not far from Highland Park. I can't afford to live in Highland Park. But I'll go up there, and you know all the rich people are sitting around spending hundreds of dollars on their fancy dinners. You know, and there's poor people walking by, and you know, it looks like they couldn't care less. They drive their fancy Jaguar. And I'm not down on the rich today, but I know Jesus Christ was rich, and he became poor. There's a lot of people that won't turn their... Jesus said, unless you lose your life for me, you'll not gain it. Unless a seed of corn fall into the, gr the ground and be broken, it cannot bear forth fruit. Every single one of us, me included, are going to stand before Jesus Christ someday. Every knee shall bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee. Every knee. Do you know your sin is what's blocking you from feeling God's great presence? I wake up in the morning and I feel lonely because I'm still single. And I'll say, Jesus, I need to feel your love this morning. I need to feel you, Lord. You know, it's me and you, Lord. I need to feel your love right now. And you know, it's not no big emotional burst, but I can feel the love of God touch my emotional system. And I'll get up out of bed and I'll feel great. And I'll start doing my study. I study for four or five hours a day. I study another four or five hours at night. In the middle of the night, I wake up and I study. I watch the TBN network, channel 42 on the B side of the cable. Do you know if you're a Christian, you need to fill your mind with Christian-oriented information? My people perish for lack of knowledge, Jesus said. My people perish for lack of knowledge. 
I hope you realize today that I'm not doing this for the fun of it, and I'm not in the condemnation business. But you know, after you've seen young people, men and women in hell, like God showed me that vision two years ago, I saw young people, men and women, with their hands raised up. They had no clothes on, and they were screaming and yelling for help. And Jesus allowed me to feel their pain for a few seconds. And I felt their pain. And I said, Lord, I said, why? Why are you showing this to me? And he said, Jonathan, he said, it's too late for them. They've already passed over. It's too late for them. They've already passed over. And Jesus was weeping. He was weeping. A lot of people think he's having a hallelujah time up there. But you know, he's weeping over lost souls. He's weeping and he's waiting for you today. Please make a choice to receive Jesus. You don't have to go to church to receive him, but there's some churches that are trying to do good things and there's some good ones out there, but you have to seek because a lot of them aren't. A lot of them are full of themselves, they're proud and arrogant. And I said to the Lord, I said, why are you showing me this? Young people, no children there. Young people, men and women, no clothes, screaming and yelling. I felt their pain, it was sickening. And he said, John, it's too late for them. They've already passed over, but you can help those out there. And he pointed his finger to the world to me. And he gave me a commission to set the captives free. That's what I'm here in Dallas for, to help people. Write me for my books today. You know, there's a good book by Kenneth Hagin, How You Can Be Led by the Spirit of God. If you're a Christian, you're wondering, listen to that voice inside. Don't listen to your head because Satan puts garbage in your head. If you fill your mind with the word of God, the fiery darts of the enemy, they can't come against you. Faith quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Put on the full armor of God that you may withstand the wiles of the enemy, the Bible says. Paul said, put on the full armor of God that you may withstand the wiles of the enemy. If you're depressed today, if you're suffering, all the answers are in the word of God. Read it. Read it. Wake up and read it, go to bed and read it, take it to work and read it, on your lunch hour read it, and you'll become so powerful that the devil can't do nothing to you. If you have a depression in your life today, break that depression by getting some hope in your life. The book of Psalms says hope deferred makes the heart sick. If you get a hope in your life today, you'll break that bondage of depression and the devil can't stick around and steal your joy anymore. If you read good books like Dress to Kill by Rick Renner, who's a preacher in the Baptist church, he's had demons come against him, he's had no joy, he's had depression, and he, he lays it out for you. If you can't read, if you're illiterate today, write me and I'll send you some of my tapes. If you're a homosexual today and you need deliverance, quote Leviticus 18.22. It says, a man shall not lie with another man. It's, it's a death. It will defile your temple. The body that God meant for you to use for him. Sexual perversions will send you straight to hell, brother. Straight to hell. Your body is meant for God. He's the creator. We're the creation. Our bodies are to be holy. Not sexually perverted. Homosexuals aren't happy today. They go to bars, they're looking for love. There's no love in a gay bar. No love. And you know it. You look around. They, I mean, come on. They go around looking for joy. They don't have it. People fill their life with materials. And they're not happy. You need to get to know Jesus Christ today. If you're not saved, you better get to know him because he's coming soon. And you're going to be left behind in the tribulation. The Antichrist is going to be coming, and you're going to be left on earth with the devil. The Bible says the Holy Spirit will be taken off earth. His children will be taken out in the rapture of the church. He'll leave them here for seven years. The tribulation will take period, will take place. Don't think for a minute we're going to be around for 20 years. I mean, come on. We're destroying the water, all the rich guys that own the factories today, and the guys in the White House, they, they're just puppets for the rich. That's all they are. I mean, the guys that own the factories have been polluting the environment, and the rich guys in the White House and the Senate, they're not doing nothing to 
tax the rich, the poor keep getting poorer, the rich keep getting richer. It's the opposite of what God wants. Don't expect God to be in the White House. It's full of evil men. Evil men. And there's a lot of you saying, oh, you got a big mouth. Do you know there's no way you can say to me, I got a big mouth? Everything I got to say comes out of this book, whether you like it or not. And you're going to have to stand before this book someday, buddy and lady and rich person. You can't take your money with you. You came into this world naked and you'll leave naked. It's only what you do for Christ today is going to last. It's only what you do for him is going to last. Only what you do for him is going to last. Today, if you're suffering with depression, if you've been abused, if you've been sexually abused like I was when I was a child, from five years old to 12 years old, if you've gone through that, my ministry wants to help you. I want to help you. Call me. I'll talk to you personally myself or one of my staff, or I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Let me minister to you. God's using Jonathan Bell Ministries today. There's not a lot of people that have helped us so far since we've been here. We've been here for two and a half months now. I pray that God will speak to your heart today, that you'll, you'll want to write me for one of my books if you're depressed. Write for this book, David A. Seaman. If you're suffering with low self-esteem, don't let the devil steal from you anymore. You need to get, get happy. You'll get happy when you fill your mind with the Word of God. Don't let the devil steal from you. He stole from me until I was 27 years old. I was depressed. I wanted to kill myself for years. And this voice inside kept saying, it's going to get better, Jonathan Bell. It's going to get better. And by the grace of God, I, I got through the suffering times. I got through the broken relationship times. Write me today, please. Write me. I'm not asking for your bank account. I'm asking you to write me and help us. Write for my books. Jesus loves you today. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord, bless these people today. Help the children that are watching, the women that are watching, the men, the young people that are suffering today. Pour out your blessing upon them right now in Jesus' name, Lord. Help them to read your word. God bless them in Jesus' name. We come against Satan. We break everything that he's trying to do in their lives today. We break you down, devil. We come against you, Satan, in Jesus' name. And we curse you and we bring you down. You get your hands off the children of God. You get your hands off Jonathan Bell Ministries. Call me today. Write me for one of my books. If you're suffering with demonic oppression as the devil's attacking you today, Fill your mind with the Word of God, but write me for this book. Dress to Kill. And don't forget, this book cost me some money. So take into consideration other things, please. Write me with your prayer request. I'd love to pray for you. I'd love to meet you in person. I'm putting a conference on here in Dallas before Christmas. Write me if you're interested in coming to the conference. It's especially for people that suffer with abuse sexual, mental, physical abuse. Remember, we're trying to set up a ranch outside Dallas to bring people from abusive relationships and bring them into wholesome relationships with Jesus Christ and with Christians. Consider us today, if you will. At least write me. And let me know who you are. Let me pray for you. Let me talk to you personally on the phone. Write me, Jonathan Bell Ministries, P.O. Box 191089. Dash 577 Dallas, Texas, and they'll have it on the screen at the end of the program. Please write me today. I pray for you that I pray that God will light you up. Let your light so shine. Jesus said, preach it off the mountaintop. Preach it off the mountaintops. Don't be ashamed of the gospel today. Stand up for Jesus. Tell people what he's doing for you. Don't talk depression today. Talk positive. Jesus never went around speaking negative. He spoke positive. Be a more optimist today, not a pessimist. Fuel your mind with the word of God today and you'll be powerful. 
The devil can't do anything to you. Faith quenches the fiery darts of the enemy. Like Paul said, put on the full armor of God that you may withstand the walls of the enemy. Read it. It's in the New Testament. Fill your mind with the New Testament. If you're a new believer, read the book of John. Study it. God bless you today. I pray to God that he'll be with you in a special way. That you'll feel his touch in your life today. Do you know he loves you with all his heart? His arms are open and he can't come in until you invite him in. Invite him in today. Ask him to come into your life. Confess your sin. Come on, Acts 2.38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You're not, God's not finished with you just because you walk to the front of the altar. He wants you to build a personal relationship with Him. Now start it today. Talk to God. He wants to be intimate with you. He wants to be your closest friend today, but He can't be unless you want to be. He won't push Himself on you. He will not push Himself on you. God bless you today. And remember, Jesus loves you with all His heart. Hear his voice and hear his call today. Let him come in your heart today. Let him be with you today. If you're lonely, if you're depressed, if you just lost your job, invite Jesus into your life today. Read his word every day so you can build a relationship with him. He wants to have a relationship with you, not a religion. Let him be, let him have a relationship with you. Seek and you find. Knock and the door is open. Ask and you receive. Don't ask in sin. Confess your sin and then ask him, not for your greed, but for your needs. And speak positive. Speak the word of God. Don't speak negative. The Bible says you give life or death out your tongue. Out of the heart comes the issues of life and out of the tongue comes life or death to every situation. Talk positive today. Have faith in God. You know, today's the beginning for you. Don't forget to write me. I love you with all my heart, even though you may not get that from my preaching today. I love you. God bless you. God bless you.